Now you go do a word study. On the first day, God said it was good. Second day, it was good. Third day, it was good. You get to man and he says it is now very good. Why? When he created, it was great. He created, it, that's great. It's great, that's great. Then he creates his man and then he hands everything he's created to man and he says, now that's very good. That's the heart of our Father. friend and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag. You know we serve an awesome God, a generous God. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's generosity. Jesus said no love has no greater love has a man for his friend than to lay down his life for his friend. That's the ultimate of generosity. And when we're born again, we are born of his spirit born according to His likeness. That same generous spirit is within us. Within you is a drive and a desire to be generous. And like anything in the kingdom of God, we receive that by faith. And so to live the generous life, I just want to hear from the Word of God. What does He say about who I am? And then I want to live it out. I know you do too. So enjoy this. I'll see you later. God so desperately wanted you. Oh, come on. That even with the memory of the failure of the first Adam, was still prepared to give because he loved you so much that he would take his only son that he has at that moment, Jesus, and give him. Talk about a generous life. Give his only son that we might live, that whoever believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. That means it's settled. Now, now that you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your life has begun. You're not waiting to get to heaven for it. You have everlasting life right now. And what is that life? Zoe. Life the way God gave it. Life the way God has it. Now. Lift your hand and say, I have life the way God has it right now. See, family, the heart of the Father. Jesus said, I know my Father. The heart of the Father is love, and love gives. Everybody say, love gives. Come with me to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. I'm going to read this from verse 9. We're going to go backwards, up through the verses. In reverse, okay? Verse 9. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. God wants you to have eternal life. He wants you to have everlasting life. He wants you to have life the way He has it, and He wants you to have it in abundance. So He did that through His only begotten Son. And the Bible says... This is the love of God manifesting. Love manifesting. In this, in what? Verse 8. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. It doesn't just say God loves. Yes, He does. But that's because water is wet. God is love. So if water's wet and you get water on you, you're wet. Why? Because that's what water is. So God is love. So when He gets on you, He loves you. Why? Because He's love. He can't do anything else. Oh, come on. you got to get this. God is incapable of doing anything else but love you. Lift your hand and say, my God loves me. Because He is love. Okay, now remember that. He is love. Now, verse 8. Well, we read that. He who knows... He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So the heart of the Father is love. Love gives. 
Love is generous. Say that. Love is generous. Say it again. Say it again. Now look at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. Let's say it again. Love is generous. Let us love one another. Which is generous. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Oh, come on. Didn't Jesus say, I know the Father? How many of you born again? You born of God? You born of love? You born of a generous person? You know God? You know the Father? You know He's generous? So are you. Hallelujah. See, family, we are His offspring. We are the offspring of God. You see that in verse 4. You see it in Acts chapter 17, verse 28 and 29. Say, I am the offspring of God. See, generosity is a God thing. That's why the world struggles with generosity. When you're born again, it's built into you. It's part of your godly, your spiritual DNA. Oh, come on, lift your hand and say, as a born-again child of God, my DNA means I'm generous. See, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. And then he says, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Come on now, God just spent five days creating this planet, creating the animals, creating the fish, creating the everything in it, and the trees and everything. He creates it all, then creates this man, and hands the whole thing over to man. That's the heart of our Father. He's generous, and we created in His image. So God created man in His own image. Verse 27, in the image of God, He created him. Male and female, He created them. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. It all belongs to you. I've given my creation to you. And God said, see, I've given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I've given every green herb for food. And so it was. Then God saw everything that he made, including man, and indeed it was very good. Now, you go do a word study. On the first day, God said it was good. Second day, it was good. Third day, it was good. You get to man, and he says, it is now very good. Why? When he created, it was great. He created, that's great. It's great, that's great. Then he creates his man, and then he hands everything he's created to man, and he says, now that's very good. That's the heart of our Father. The whole reason for his creation was to give it to you. Amen. Say, I serve a generous God. I am of God. And therefore, I have a generous heart. And so, family, we need to be open to receive guidance by discipleship. See, when I was first born again, I didn't know how we should sing. See, I was brought up by a church that taught that Musical instruments were not godly, and we sang very quiet songs in a very quiet church. And so, for the very first time, I went to Christian Family Church, and they started with praise and worship. I looked, I thought, my, this is not a disco. <laughs> and there were people going crazy, and there's this one clapping, and this one's dancing, and I looked around and I thought, how do you get so many idiots in one room at one time? <laughs> I just sat down. I was like, just looking at these people. 
until I found in the Word of God, someone taught me where the Word says to make a noise with every available instrument. Psalm 150 basically says, if it makes a noise, use it. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout out with a voice of triumph. Dance before the Lord. And you start finding, hang on, I had to be taught that. And in, as a born-again child of God, when I, I didn't yet get to that spiritual growth seminar, you know, my first day that I went as a Christian, you're kind of busy listening, and, and you know, eventually you realize, now I'm a Christian, I've got to go there, and, and you kind of watch everybody, and then your foot starts going, you know, and then maybe the hand goes, and someone looks at you and like, you, why? Because it's in you. Are you with me? But you don't want, you feel a little intimidated. I'm, I'm new at this, should I, shouldn't I? Until you realize, hang on, this is what God wants. It's what he wants to do. And someone had to disciple me into living out the person I already was. Praying in tongues. I remember one day, I mean, I'm born again, filled with the Spirit, and I do pray in tongues. And uh, I was at a, at a leaders meeting. And I remember sitting at uh, all the leaders were. And I was, I was just being promoted, just being set up as a, as a cell leader. And so it's the first leaders meeting I'm going to. Very much similar to our Vision Victory evening. But we were sitting in big one long, big circle, big circle. And everyone starts praying. Pastor Joe Jones, my area pastor, says, come, let's pray together. And they begin to pray. They're praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. And eventually I'm like, how long does this go on? I mean, I, I shunned, I run, I tied my bow tie and everything. I'm, I'm, I'm done. But they keep praying. And I remember looking, I thought, yo, but these people can pray. Eh? And then I saw Pastor Joe looking at me. So every time he looked at me, <laughs> and I'm just carrying on. And eventually you start, and it's still going on. I thought, yo, it's almost lunchtime, man. Eh? They prayed good long time. And I struggled. So eventually after the meeting, Pastor Joe came to me and said, uh, is, this, you, is this new? Have, have you prayed before? I said, no, I've prayed before. He says, so then, you know, I noticed that you were struggling a bit. I said, I don't know if people pray this long. And I prayed, prayed a few minutes and got it done. He says, I tell you what, I'll be with you tomorrow morning. What time do you wake up? I said, well, probably about 6.30 or so. He says, can I be at your house at 5.30? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And then 5.30, I, I remember I went to bed that night. 5.30, our whole room lights up because our bedroom was right next to our driveway. So as the car turns in, the headlights hits the curtain, you know. I don't know. Room lights up. Look, who's here now? I forgot. So I opened my windows. I said, it's Pastor Joe. And I have to quickly, quickly grab a tracksuit, run some toothpaste through my teeth quickly, go and open the door. Hello, Pastor Joe, you know. <laughs> and he came in. And he discipled me in the presence of God. Amen. And took me through times of God. And there were times when I pray, and he'd just show me, and we'd read the word and pray some more. And eventually I extended my prayer time. Till I fell in love and I realized by spending time with God and praying in the Spirit, I was praying the mysteries of God and, and, and praying things that I didn't even know how to pray for, but He prays in through me. And so I was discipled to become who I already was. Are you getting this? Family, it's the same with generosity. In the world, we were taught to be stingy, to protect, to keep. To lock people out. To hold on. And we become very closed in our lifestyle. And we look at other people who've got more than what we got. And we become jealous of them and envious. And all those are works of the Spirit. Works of demonic spirits. Are you with me? Works of demonic spirits. But when you're born again, you receive the DNA of God. You receive that spirit life of generosity. But I needed to be trained in it. I needed to be developed in it. I needed somebody to tell me, you're generous. And so generosity must be modeled, but it must also be received. And so when I learned from the Word of God that I'm a generous person, I watched other men of God. I watched how they operate. 
There were times that I thought I was generous, and then I went out with somebody, and I thought, that takes it to a whole new level. I watch how men would pay for a whole meal, where I used to, you know, take two or three people, and this guy would take out a whole group, and then he'd give his credit card before I even could offer to pay. I saw people modeling generosity. Times when I kind of, you know, I, I couldn't quite, afford it, but I'd never say it, and kind of hold back, and all of a sudden, they would step in and just do it all, and I go, wow, I could have done it, but, you know, but <laughs> now they just took over, and it's like, no, don't worry, and I watched that, and I developed it, and I received it, so I could step out and live the generous life, everybody say, living the generous life, <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 9 Verse 10 from the Amplified Bible. Remember, God gave seed to Adam. God, who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating, will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing. And listen, increase the fruits of your righteousness, which manifests itself in active goodness, kindness, and charity. Thus you will be enriched in all things and in every way. So God wants to enrich you in all things and in every way. Why? So that you can be generous. And your generosity as it is administered by us will bring forth thanksgiving to God. Family, I want you to see God wants you to be generous. Why? Because that's how He created you. But you can only be generous with what you have. So God knows you're generous. But generous people need to have something to be generous with. So He doesn't just make you generous. He puts in your life something so that you can be generous. Most of us want God to give us something because we're in trouble. We want God to give us something to bail us out. We want God to give us something because we need a miracle. We want God to give us because I'm struggling. No, God gives us so that I can live out my generous lifestyle. Because when you're living out your generous lifestyle, all those problems are taken care of. So God doesn't give you things to rescue you. He gives you things so that you can be generous. Oh, is this revelation coming through? Say this, God gives me things so that I can be generous. So if you read verse 11 from the English Standard Version, he says, you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way. Some people want to be rich, just be rich. You ask people, you can ask anyone on the street, would you like to be rich? Yes. Why? Doesn't everybody want to be rich? Yeah, but why? Uh, My problems will be over. Come on, you getting this? Have you ever thought, why do you want to be rich? But yeah, he says, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous in every way. Listen to the message translation. The most generous God, the most generous God, who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something so that you can then give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. Say this, my God wants me to be Generous in every way. See, sowing and reaping, giving and receiving, can only be operated by a generous heart. A selfish heart doesn't understand sowing and reaping. A selfish heart will give to get. A generous heart understands giving and receiving so that I can give. And receive so that I can give. 
and receive so that I can give. That's the generous heart. A true farmer, a true farmer by nature is generous. See, he wants a harvest. But he knows selfish people don't get a harvest. He has to give to his soil a lot before he even puts seed in. He has to give time. He has to give nutrients. He has to give compost. He has to give fertilizer. He has to give, are you with me? And he has to put a lot of time, his effort. He wakes up real early in the morning. Maybe stays up late. Works hard. But because he knows there is a reward of harvest. See, the harvest is the reward of his generosity. His level of generosity will determine the success of his harvest. Let me say it again. His level of generosity will determine the success of his harvest. If he only throws in half his bags of seed, then he's only going to get half the harvest. Does that make sense? See, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 23, from the New Living Translation. Proverbs 11, verse 23. The godly can look forward to a reward. Remember Hebrews 11, verse 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The godly can look forward to a reward, while the wicked can expect only judgment. Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Oh, come on. You getting a hold of this? God desires for us to be generous. The purpose of generosity is to reach a lost soul and get them through the door of Jesus Christ. The Word tells us that the generous will prosper and will always have provision. We serve a great God that has great plans for us. If you've been struggling in this area or would like to build your faith to live the generous life you've been called to, Alan Bagg will help you discover the importance of adopting a generous lifestyle. A person who lives generously will always give generously. This series will help you understand the powerful laws of giving and receiving. It will help you get rid of a poverty mindset. See, living the generous life is not just about giving. It's having your eyes open for where there are needs. This series will help you be generous as a child of God. You're going to see it all over the Bible. We serve a generous God and He's generous towards you so that you can be generous. Get this series and live the generous life that God desires for you. Contact Alan Bag Ministries by making use of any of these details. That is the God that we serve, a generous, generous, generous God. He is always reaching out. He's the one that found us. He gave us life. He told us He's the healer. He told us He's the provider. That's how He introduced Himself to Abraham. He is El Shaddai, the one that suckers, the one that looks after and, and, and feeds and protects. And that's His Spirit. He's a generous God. And when we're born again, we are born of His Spirit. We are born as generous people. So I want you to get a hold of that. Get a hold of the series today. It's going to help encourage us to know who we are so that we can also live this generous life. And when we live the generous life, we're expressing the heart of God. And we can reach so many more people by helping them through their situations. And when we do that, we reveal the heart of God. Those people will have a desire to know God and come to know them as their Lord and Savior as well. Well, I know you've been through some really serious challenges, and I know that God has already provided for them, and so we're going to stand in agreement on that. He is a generous God. He wants to help you. He wants to protect you and look after you. And no matter what you've been through, His great generosity has already provided for those needs. Let's pray right now. Father, I thank you my, for my friend. I know that no matter what they've been going through, the challenges that the enemy has thrown at their lives, you've already given the solution. Jesus bore away every sickness and took away every pain. And by his stripes, they've been healed. 
We thank you that you do supply every need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You've blessed that house with every spiritual blessing. And so in the name of Jesus, I call on that blessing and I speak it into that home in the name of Jesus. And no matter what the enemy's done to try and harm them, I turn it now in Jesus' name and that you would turn it to your glory and that you deliver them and provide and make sure that they walk in the fullness of your plan in their lives. And Father, I thank you for this and we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, that prayer right now has gone to work and I believe you're going to see the result in a few days' time. And when it does, please write to us. I'd love to hear from you. I enjoy reading about the testimonies of what God has done in your life. And we want to share what we can with other people as well. That's all we have time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church in many locations. With the help of technology and God's powerful grace at work, you can now fellowship with family at the Bay Christian Family Church at our many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to connect, join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing Word. For any details on our many locations or to join us via live stream, visit our website or contact us at any of our details. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org. Yeah.